Just before we start, for those of you who didn't know, the Cold Case Detectives podcast is now live. You can find a link to that in the description below this video. Thank you. Between the UK and Ireland, there is estimated to be 8 to 10 million CCTV cameras. For an average person, that sounds like a lot, but for the families left behind when a person goes missing, it's often not enough. Despite millions of cameras running in stores and malls up and down the country, many people still go missing, leaving behind only a brief moment captured and frozen in time. On today's episode of Cold Case Detective, we discuss three unsolved disappearances with CCTV footage. Georgina Garcella. Born October 29, 1987, Georgina Garcella was the middle daughter of Andrea Garcella and her ex-husband, a man named Gassem, who originally came to the United Kingdom from Libya to study. Although born in England, Georgina spent much of her childhood in Libya, before the family relocated back to Britain. After falling in with the wrong crowd during her high school years, Georgina started to become unreliable, a trait she carried with her even into adulthood, as she struggled to hold down a steady job despite being described as intelligent. Family members also knew her to struggle with an eating disorder and binge drinking. Described as someone who enjoyed cooking, meditation, and going running, the 30-year-old was a loving mother of two and, at the time of her disappearance, was staying in Worthing, West Sussex with her own mother Andrea, following the breakup she had with the father of her two sons. On March 7, 2018, Andrea Garcella recalled seeing her daughter before she left the house that day, straightening her hair around 8am. She described her daughter as being a bit agitated that morning, as Georgina explained that her phone was playing up and she intended on taking it to a local shop to inquire about having it fixed before she headed to the job center and then to meet her father. In the meantime, Georgina's mother gave her an old mobile phone, which required a new SIM card. Georgina also asked to borrow money. Her mother was reluctant, but ultimately handed over the cash, watching as her daughter left the house. Georgina was seen on CCTV in the local shop. The footage shows her asking about the mobile phone and laughing and joking with the shop attendant around 9.30 a.m. This is the last confirmed footage of the 30-year-old. After this, Georgina's movements are unknown. It took 10 days before Georgina was reported missing to the police. There was some confusion about her whereabouts, as her mother had thought she had gone to stay with friends and that her daughter wasn't speaking to her and was annoyed with her mother due to her reluctance to hand over the money earlier that day. Around March 12th, Georgina's ex-boyfriend called her mother saying he couldn't reach her, and after asking around, Andrea Garcella found that her daughter had not been seen or heard from since March 7th. Georgina never visited the job center, nor did she turn up to the meeting she had arranged with her father, Gassem. Police found that her phone hadn't been used to send messages since 3 a.m. on the morning of March 7th. The last time it pinged at a cell tower, was between 11.30 and 11.45 a.m. in the Worthing area. Her bank account had not been touched, and despite the large number of CCTV cameras in the Worthing town center, there exists only one other potential recording of the 30-year-old. The footage is believed to be of Georgina and shows her accompanied by another woman and carrying shopping bags. The footage is from around 3 p.m. on the same day that she went missing, the unknown woman has not been identified as of yet, and no one has come forward to name her. In October of 2018, Georgina's case was featured on Crime Watch, and Sussex Police offered a £5,000 reward for information regarding her whereabouts. Law enforcement interviewed her friends, family, and ex-boyfriends. All were cleared of suspicion. 
They also searched her home, but found nothing to help them move forward in the investigation. But Georgina's family did not sit idly by as police carried out their inquiries. They actively made video appeals, created a Facebook page, put up flyers, and later created a reconstruction of her last known movements, trying desperately to shed light on the case of their missing loved one. A month after the mother of two went missing, on April 20th, 2018, a witness came forward, claiming to have seen a woman matching Georgina's description with two men near a Tesco supermarket on the evening of March 7th. They were allegedly in an argument, but the three of them left together, heading towards the station. CCTV footage from this area was given to police, but it had been corrupted and could not be played. Thus far in the investigation, this sighting remains unconfirmed. From this point, Georgina's case begins to grow cold. In March 2019, Andrea asked that police search the Teevil Gate construction site in Worthing, concerned that her daughter's body was dumped there, or that she had suffered some sort of accident. However, this request was refused, given that there was insufficient evidence to support any claim that Georgina was near the construction site and that something may have happened to her whilst there. A month later, the Worthing Herald and Sussex Police received a ransom note from fraudsters claiming to have Georgina in their possession. It was debunked by authorities, but the disturbing claims around the 30-year-old's case did not end there. Andrea Garcella received grim messages claiming that her daughter had been butchered and burned by a drugs gang who scattered her remains. These claims came when the missing person's Facebook page for Georgina had been hacked. Later, in 2019, authorities changed the status of Georgina's case from that of a missing person to a homicide. There is no evidence that Georgina is dead, but there is also no proof of life either. Andrea fears a number of things that her daughter has fallen victim to sex traffickers, has been abducted, or has met a dark fate at the hands of a stranger, citing that Georgina could be, quote, too trusting. It has now been over two years since Georgina went missing, and a £10,000 reward is now being offered for information on her whereabouts. If you have any information pertaining to Georgina's case, you can call Crime Stoppers at 0800 triple five, triple one. Jon Jonsson. A weekend away should be fun for all involved, but for the Jonsson family, it was their worst nightmare. On Friday, February 8th, 2019, Jon Jonsson arrived in Dublin, Ireland. A 41-year-old father of four, Jorn planned to attend and participate in a poker tournament that night, before his fiancée joined him the following day so they could enjoy and explore the city together over the weekend. Described as a kind, caring, and level-headed man, the taxi driver, originally from Iceland, had no other friends or family in Ireland at the time of his disappearance. It is widely believed by all of those around him that he was in good mental health and had been looking forward to the trip. Jorn's fiance, Jana, arrived on February 9th around 10 a.m., and after meeting Jorn in their room, she headed down to the hotel bar for coffee alone. It was during this time that her fiance left the hotel, although why is still unknown. Jorn was captured on CCTV leaving the Bonington Hotel at 11.05 a.m. Camera footage showed him walking past McGitton's bar at 11.07 a.m., where he exited onto Swords Road. Jorn was last seen at the exit of Highfield Hospital, heading northbound on Swords Road towards Collins Avenue. This CCTV footage is the last confirmed sighting of the 41-year-old. Jana reported her partner missing on February 10, 2019, just one day after Jon was last seen. While police were able to locate Jon on the CCTV described, attempts to retrieve CCTV from other areas of Whitehall proved fruitless. Jon had left his passport and belongings behind at the hotel, but it was believed that he had a hotel room keycard in his possession, 
and that he had possibly even had a debit card and cash on his person. Police confirmed that Yon's bank accounts had not been touched since he left the hotel, and it's also been estimated that the father of four lost 4,000 euro in the poker tournament on February 8th. 12 members of Yon's family flew to Ireland after he was reported missing to help the investigation and to partake in the local searches. On February 23rd, 2019, a large scale search consisting of 80 people took place, with many of these being volunteers. The Jonsson family also appeared on the Irish TV show Crime Call, where they appealed for information to help bring Jon home. Of the 41 year old going missing, they said, quote, It doesn't make any sense. This isn't like Jon. He just doesn't vanish. They fear that Jon had met with foul play. There is very little else publicly known about the inquiry into the disappearance of Jon Jonsson. In December of 2019, the Jonsson family hired a private investigator named Liam Brady to help supplement the police investigation. The latest update in the case came in February of 2020, when Liam Brady announced that he is hoping to speak to a person of interest in a European jail who may have information. The Jonsson family continue to fly out to Ireland regularly to conduct further searches for their missing loved one. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Jon Jonsson, you can email findjonindublin at gmail.com or contact Liam Brady at liam at liambradyie or call him at 086-256-6697. Leah Croucher On February 14th, 2019, 19-year-old Leah Croucher left her home around 6pm, claiming she was going to visit a friend. Just 15 minutes before, she had changed the settings on her phone, with police suspecting she had turned the location setting off. Wherever she was going, Leah wanted it to be private. This became more evident when it was discovered that Leah hadn't gone to see her friend at all, and her movements between 6 to 7.30 p.m. that night are completely unknown. For some online sleuths, Leah's secret meeting was the catalyst for what transpired a day later. Leah headed out to work on February 15th, where CCTV picked her up walking down Buzzercut Lane in Fursden, Milton Keynes, around 8.15 that morning. This is the last confirmed sighting of the 19-year-old. After Leah had been reported missing, three separate witnesses came forward to claim they had seen her that morning between 9.30 and 11.15 a.m. near Thurston Lake. All three claimed that she was on her phone, while two reported that she appeared visibly upset as she talked on the mobile. These sightings have not been confirmed to definitively be Leah, but authorities suspect that these sightings are credible. Leah's family were quick to report her missing, and an extensive investigation was launched into her sudden and uncharacteristic disappearance. Officers visited over 4,000 homes in Milton Keynes, deploying specialist teams, drones, and helicopters in their search for the missing teenager. Later, in October of 2019, Marine and dive teams searched the lakes across town, spending two weeks searching Thurston Lake and the surrounding areas. But this turned up no items of Leah's, nor any other answers or information as to her whereabouts. Described as a homebody and a girl who enjoyed reading fantasy fiction and spending time with her family over going out to a pub or club, Leah's family opened up during the initial investigation describing how the 19-year-old had changed in recent months. They claimed she had become moody and argumentative, and often sulked in her room for hours on end. It wasn't until the investigation was opened into her disappearance that they found out what might have been the cause of the behavior they were putting down to her simply being a teenager. It was revealed that Leah had been seeing an older man. He was around 27 years old and engaged to another woman. This man had been investigated by the police, and they have confirmed that he is currently not a suspect in the case. He has an alibi for the time that Leah went missing. 
Despite this, the family appear to have their suspicions about this unnamed man. Leah's older brother, Hayden, was issued with a restraining order in May of 2019 after threatening him. That same month, Hayden posted on social media that the man had groomed and mistreated his sister. In February 2020, Leah's father, John, said he believed a man was withholding key information about the case and accused the unnamed person of being a selfish person and that the situation was, quote, destroying his family. He added that he would publicly name the man if he does not come forward. It is not clear whether John is referring to Leah's boyfriend, but many suspect he is. Of this matter, DCI Andy Howard and the Thames Valley Police agreed that some people potentially hold more information about Leah's life than they are willing to share with police so far. However, he was less convinced about whether those people would know why she disappeared. Briefly, in May 2019, it was suspected that a severed foot found in Lincolnshire possibly belonged to Leah, but this possibility has since been ruled out. Police continue to thoroughly investigate Leah's case. An anniversary appeal this year turned up 20 new reports of information or potential sightings from various areas across the UK. The 19-year-old's phone and bank accounts have been inactive since she went missing. Meanwhile, tragedy continues to haunt the Croucher family. In November of 2019, Hayden Croucher, just 24 years old, took his own life after struggling to cope with the disappearance of his sister, whom he was very close to. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Leah Croucher, you can call Crime Stoppers on 0800 triple five triple one and there you have the facts please leave a comment down below with your own theories and speculations and remember to like this video and subscribe to support the channel thank you for watching stay alert stay safe and i'll see you next time